When insiders are buying their own stock, this is usually a very good sign that the company could potentially have much greater future value and that the insiders themselves are bullish on the stock. Now, one thing to always keep in mind when you are watching insider trades is to remember that it could be the fact that the insiders have got knowledge that perhaps people outside the company don't have, such as future product launches or perhaps earnings calls that are going to be better than expected. However, it is important always to weigh this up against the fundamentals of the company and never to purely base your investment decisions on what insiders at a company are doing. And this is why it is absolutely critical to study the financials of a company, know the fundamentals and to know your numbers. This is why Darwin and I created StockScreen.app and it is a game changer for stock market investors. It is basically a simple place where you can go a one-stop shop to get all of your data as well as run DCF calculations, do your different valuation metrics and know whether or not the company valuations are tying up with some of the stuff that you're seeing in the news and in the media. Because if there is one thing to remember with stock market investing is that perception does not always meet reality. In fact, most of the time, the market caps, which is largely based on perception, is entirely out of sync with what a company is truly valued at. And this is why it is important to know your numbers, to study those fundamentals, and to absolutely know that the companies you are buying into have real intrinsic value. Now, when it comes to so far, there definitely is a very bullish sentiment from within the company, in particular from the CEO, who has just purchased more than $5 million worth of shares. And this has got a lot of investors and so far stockholders very, very excited. But of course, for us, it always comes back to the fundamentals. So we are going to have a look at so far in a stock screen app. We're going to have a look at those financials. We're going to look at how they've been doing and uh, make an accurate assumption based on the current valuation. So the stock is currently trading, as you can see, at $5.94. And if we go back on the historical pricing, we can see that the stock really has taken a massive plummet uh, during this post-pandemic uh, trade, which has happened to most stocks, to be absolutely fair. Now, the stock did once uh, trade up in the $23, $24 mark. It is currently trading, as I said, at $5.94. Some expectations after earnings call is that the stock could potentially bump up to about eight, nine bucks. And of course, some analysts even talk about the fact that the stock could go past 10. That being said, we want to lean in and have a look at some of those numbers. So if we look at the overview, the market cap on the stock currently 4.75 billion enterprise value sitting at 19 billion and then uh, no P ratio on the stock. And that is because there are no profits on the table, no dividend as well on the stock, of course. Now, looking at the revenue in the trailing 12 months, 1.4 billion. Uh, debts in the most recent quarter sitting at a whopping 4.74 billion. Equity in the most recent quarter, 5.5 billion, which we're going to have a look at how that's made up. But always keep in mind these companies that are not making profit, that equity is going to be largely derived of mostly shareholders' investment into the company. And then look at the net income, negative 391.41 million. Cash on hand, most recent quarter, 1.13 billion. And uh, free cash flow, negative 6.16 billion. So not looking great in terms of the numbers in the last while. Now look at the shares outstanding, 916.76 million shares are outstanding. If you look at the insider holding, 6.42. And the short interest, guys, has continued to hold 9.81%. And this, I think, is always something that you need to pay attention to. When a market has been through a really tough cycle, like most of the stocks have been through over the last while, you would expect that the short interest would start to back off, especially on companies that have got great future potential. The short sellers know their stuff and they definitely are not in it to lose money. Now, if you look at this, the short interest is large, 9.81%. And uh, if there was better news here, you definitely would expect this to start backing off. Institutional holding, 35.08%. Now, if we move across very quickly and have a look at our cash flow statements, you can see it's all red, not looking great. Negative uh, 54, negative 479, negative 1.35, negative 6 billion on the operating cash flows. They're just absolutely hemorrhaged cash. Free cash flows, negative uh, 92, negative 503, negative 1.4, negative 6.1. So they really have just been just absolutely blowing money out of the water. Now, if we look at that balance sheet, 
I think this again is not going to be very indicative of the true value of the company because a lot of this is going to be based on paper valuations. The company isn't producing significant profits at this point. Uh, there isn't any real metrics or data to look at uh, multiples of profit to really base a decision in terms of pro uh, in terms of valuation. So this valuation is going to be purely a paper valuation and that's always very dangerous. So looking at the asset, we've gone 7.29, 8.56, 9.8. 1, 8, and then to 15.83 and I need to remind you this is despite the fact that they haven't been producing profit equity 2.13 4.7 4.7 and then up to 5.5 billion so the equity is up the assets up but of course the real story is going to be here in the revenue now this I think is a surprising part even for me and for a lot of investors who are very much not in favor of the fundamentals uh, that uh, is presented by the company at the moment. But if you look at revenue, they've gone 442, 565, 984, and then 1.4. So good growth on top line, gross profit, uh, equally good growth. Uh, they really have shown good numbers there. But this is where it all falls to pieces. The operating incomes and net incomes. I mean, they just haven't produced anything here in the last four reporting periods and uh, it translates directly into the earnings per share negative 363 negative 223 negative 0.59 so everybody expected uh, then to come closer to profit there and then back down to negative 0.65 and then look at the shares outstanding they had 66 million shares outstanding in 2019 moved up to 100 then 814 and then 916 so guys this is a clear example of a company that is absolutely reliant on uh, shareholders, uh, absolutely reliant on selling shares and uh, putting shares into the market to stay alive. So they are just diluting shareholders at an unnatural rate. I mean, you've gone 66 to 916 million. That is a huge, huge dilution uh, in terms of in terms of the shareholders value. And then uh, if we come down, have a look at our fundamental scores, you're gonna see it is really not great. 25% uh, on the fundamentals, and the only place they're scoring is net equity, which is positive, and this is largely because of stock market investors putting money into the stock. If we look at the debt, 33%, debt to equity, very high for a company that's not producing profit, 86.09. Current ratio is actually okay, and that is largely because of the fact that they have cash on hand uh, to cover some of those debts in terms of the short-term picture. Uh, but free cash flow to debt, of course, also non-existent. Momentum on top line and uh, gross profit, like I mentioned, they're actually doing a pretty decent job in terms of producing numbers, but it just doesn't translate to anything. And so only 33% on momentum. And then if we look at the growth factor, return on equity is sitting at negative 7.6, return on asset negative 3, return on invested capital negative 5, and well, no real growth on the earnings per share. So if we come down and we have a look at what the analysts are saying on the stock, we've got zero sell ratings, we've got six hold ratings and one buy rating. And again, I think a lot of those consensuses are gonna be largely based on perception because really the data doesn't support any accuracy in those assumptions. Now, if we look at the valuation uh, metrics, like I said, P ratio is non-existent, price to book 0 0.84, price to sell 2.73 and price to free cash flow, uh, 0.77 negative and that's again because they have negative free cash flows so if we move down a little bit and just quickly show you guys here in terms of the scoring uh, in terms of the fundamental summary wise 25 percent debt 33 percent momentum 33 percent and growth is uh, non-existent so unfortunately this stock is really not looking great at the moment and if we look at our uh, calculations we're unable to do a dcf calculation because they're not producing profit we're unable to do a free cash flow calculation because again no positive free cash flow so in a situation like this the pricing and the the analyst perception of the stock and you know market perception of the stock is going to be exactly that it's going to be an opinion based on perception rather than actual real data and so you know this is something i talk about quite extensively if you are investing into stocks if you are investing into the market for the long term you want to make sure that you buy companies that have actual asset value based on tangible profits and secondly you want to buy cash flow because if you're not buying cash flow you're purely buying valuation and valuations can change very quickly especially if they're based on perception of course when that perception moves on and the market moves on you're left holding bags on a company that essentially doesn't have real 
intrinsic valuations. And uh, this is why it is exceptionally dangerous. So whilst a lot of SoFi investors are probably gonna come in on this video and be very negative about it, I think it is always important to go back, do your due diligence, go and look at the data, look at the financials. And of course, a lot of people will argue that past results are not always indicative of future results. And certainly there is an element of truth to that. But we are looking for signs of life as investors who are putting our hard earned money into these stocks. We want to make sure we're putting our money into companies that A, have value and B, cash flow. Otherwise, you essentially are taking a gamble and an educated guess at best on some of these stocks. So in my opinion, so far is absolutely still not an investment. I might live to regret some of the short-term movements on the stock, but definitely if I were putting long-term money into this company, uh, it would not be an investment for me. So I'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Drop me a comment if you are a SoFi investor. Tell me exactly why you believe that the stock has long-term value. I'd love to hear your opinion. Of course, we grow and uh, we expand our knowledge base by engaging with people who don't necessarily have the same opinion as us. And I think this is the beauty of uh, channels like ours and being on the internet uh, rather than just speaking to an echo chamber the entire time. So also the other thing I want to say is if you are new to the channel and you are looking for a diverse opinion in terms of investing in stocks and long-term strategy and making sure you preserve wealth and capital, then make sure you hit that subscribe button because we release a video like this every single day breaking down a stock. And uh, if you haven't yet gone and signed up and done download it or at least put yourself on the waiting list to download stockscreen.app definitely go to stockscreen.app join the waiting list we are going to be making this to the public making it available to the public later this year it is going to be a game changer for stock market investors myself and davi created the software based on our own personal needs and i can tell you guys something to put this data together in spreadsheets is an absolute pain in the ass. We've been doing it for years and this is why we created the software and we know that this software is going to be a game changer for those people who are serious about finding stocks that have value, doing calculations and making informed decisions. So definitely go and sign up stockscreen.app and then last but not least Money Tribe. Please, you guys know what to do. Hit that like button on the way out. It really does help us with the YouTube channel.